Okay, welcome everyone. This is the August 25th uh, meeting of the uh, IPython Jupyter team, and uh, um, let's uh, let's uh, let's go ahead with the meeting. Who uh, who wants to get started? Okay, I I'll, can. I'll, um, yes, go ahead, Matthias. So not nothing fancy. I was like mostly the only one in Europe, so days are mm -hmm. quiet. I mean, quiet in the sense that not most devs are present. So I'm mostly doing community stuff, answering to people, fixing bugs, um, yeah, and traveling. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, has Eurocypa already started? No, it starts next weekend. Uh, but sadly, there is a there should maybe or maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, be a strike in the UK, so it might be really challenging to get there. Oh, a transportation strike. Yes, all train and metro. Oh, ouch! And they plan to say whether or not they will start the strike. Probably something like tonight. They will announce whether or not the strike is going on or not. Ouch! Hmm. So, Good so luck. we'll we'll see. And yeah, and I mean, usual stuff, as I say, every time I'm in Europe, uh, wake up in the morning, hundreds of mails, uh, Gitter is even worse with hundreds of unread messages and need to improve the way we do communication. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, good luck. I hope you make it. Jeremy, welcome. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, good. Well, we have we have a few new faces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm I'm Andrew. Uh, I work with Jeremy, so out in uh, Virginia here. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, uh, do you guys want to go next? Uh, we go in whatever whatever random order. So I don't know if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Uh, that's totally fine. It, the order is kind of random. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Sure. So if you want to if you want to say a few words uh, and go ahead and introduce yourselves, that's totally fine. We have no particular pre, -pre specified order. Cool. Uh, yeah, kind of very a, quickly. The, 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 form, the format of the meeting is kind of a stand-up meeting where everybody kind of goes goes through and we sort of give a few minutes to say what we work on. And I think the, the plan was to try to have a separate, more in-depth meeting about about <clears throat> what the, 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 the thread that was on the mailing list about the stuff that, that we've been discussing um, about uh, about environments for, for coupling code data, code data and runtime environments that we've been discussing. So this would be more of a summary, a quick summary of what you guys have been up to. So. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm Jeremy Freeman. Um, I run a group, a, a neuroscience research group at a, a research lab in Virginia. I'm actually currently out in Seattle. Um, and we do a variety of things uh, related to both uh, analysis of various kinds of scientific data, a lot of it neuroscience data, uh, images and time series. And we also do a lot of work on finding ways to share and distribute both our data and our computational tools and, and really eliminate barriers between the kinds of analyses we do and the ability for other people to, to reproduce and, and use those analyses. And a ton of that has recently been built on top of Jupiter in a variety of different ways that uh, we're very excited about. Um, and in particular, a recent project has been to try to allow anybody to do what we started to find very useful, which was to turn basically turn GitHub repos into Sort of instantaneous uh, deployed environments with custom configuration, um, and try to get that straight from a repo, which is something that basically uh, originally came from a conversation Fernando and I had um, that was extremely inspiring, and we have now tried to to build some of that. And a lot of that that infrastructure has been built by Andrew, uh, who maybe can say a little bit about himself. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm, I'm Andrew. Um, I, like Jeremy said, I work with him uh, out at uh, Genelia in Virginia. Um, I just do a lot of sort of, sort of software development uh, for Jeremy, and sort of lately I've been working on this this, uh, this binder project for creating these reproducible um, environments. Um, and uh, before that, I was uh, a software engineer working in computer security um, in Berkeley. And, um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to be chatting with you guys. And um, yeah, thanks. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Well, delighted to have you folks on, on the meeting, and we're obviously, as you can imagine, uh, absolutely thrilled to see this stuff uh, picking up momentum. Very, very excited. Um, okay. Um, I, I think that the URL is my binder, right? Not mine binder, but my binder. 
Yep, that correct? that's right. Perfect. Um, OK, who wants to go next? Hey, um, this is Safia. Do you want me to go ahead and introduce myself and talk a little bit about what I'm doing and when I'll be joining and all that? Uh, please, please, Safia, go ahead. Uh, we'll take notes. Are you taking notes on the hackpad, or should we take notes for you? I'm taking notes. Um, OK. So um, hey, I'm Safia. I'm new to the Jupyter Project. I am a computer science student at Northwestern. Um, my specialization is AI. Um, I also co-organized the Pi Ladies group in Chicago. Um, really love Python, think it's a great language, really love Jupyter, it's a fantastic project, and think we're doing great things. Um, I'm currently a sort of nights and weekends hacker um, on Jupyter. I've been working through the sport friendly things on 10th NP. Um, so if you guys have any kind of quick issues that you want to get out of the way or kind of um, quick fixes that have been rotting in the issues section, if they get help for a while, feel free to pass them on to me, um, and I'll be glad to fix them and take them on. Um, other than that, I'm just looking to diving into the code base and the documentation um, and working more with you folks. Um, Safia, your um, can you uh, put on the on the hackpad your uh, your GitHub ID so that we can identify you uh, uh, more easily on GitHub. That way, people will know who to ping on GitHub. It'll it'll be easier. Sure, I will put that on the Jupiter thing. I'm Captain Safia on. Okay. Perfect, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, for context, I um, I happen to have the a chance to meet with Safia recently at uh, in Berkeley. Um, Anna Nelson from the Dexy Project introduced us, uh, and then Brian had a chance to meet with her. And it, I I think it'll be it'll be great to have to have Safia's interest in in documentation and infrastructure on the project. It it, it looked like a a really great class of contributions that we need badly on the project. So very excited. Wonderful to have you on. Glad you could make the meeting. Uh, no problem. Glad as well. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, who's next on the on the roster? Dan, do you wanna do you wanna hop on? you do you wanna also introduce yourself since you can make the make the, the the previous call? I think you had some technical glitches. Would be wonderful to have you introduce yourself as well. Sure. Thank you, Fernando. Yes, this is uh, Dan Chisalfi from IBM. I apologize for missing last week. Um, I little had a little summer power outage over here in New York. Um, uh, on me with me today is uh, Gina Bustello and Peter Parente, who you met last week. Um, you may have seen us come in and out of uh, the, uh, the chat chat rooms. Um, Peter's already been very active uh, in introducing some of the uh, work we've been doing in uh, at IBM here uh, around Docker stacks for Jupyter. Um, you may have seen some of the posts I did over the weekend. Um, <clears throat> Brian and myself and Fernando have been kind of back channel conversations about how IBM can be participating more, take more of an active participation role in the Jupyter community uh, in, the, in the coming days. And um, uh, basically, as Peter mentioned last week uh, at the stand-up meeting, is that we're, we're ready to get started. Um, we have all of our uh, legal approvals in place. Uh, as a team, we're, we're, re we're allowed to kind of participate and inject ourselves in the community. Um, and, uh, you know, as we, as I mentioned uh, over the weekend in the, in the channel is, you know, I think the best thing to do there is to kind of slowly introdu introduce what we've been doing and figure out how best the community would like to, um, in, in, you know, embrace what we have uh, in some form or another. So um, I think going forward, uh, Brian and I chatted about um, having uh, a, a few web meetings or video chat uh, conferences where we can actually show some live demonstrations of the of the work we've been doing, and then we can figure out how best to uh, to move forward with that work. So um, I guess you know coordinating that is kind of the next steps. But um, uh, you know I'll I'll let uh, Gino jump in now and introduce himself, and then uh, Peter uh, as as well. You know. Gino, you, know? you there? Hello? No, I was on mute. That's what oh. was going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so hi, my name is Gino, uh, also at IBM. Um, 
Yeah, I've, I've been I'm very excited to work with the community here. I've been working in things related to IPython Jupyter uh, for the better part of a year or so. Uh, my team was uh, one of the uh, the teams that uh, we're the team that, that created um, the Spark kernel. If you guys have uh, seen mm -hmm. it, it's a Scala based kernel that plugs in into Jupyter. Uh, so we have a lot of knowledge around the uh, Python, the, the protocol, how to build kernels. Uh, very recently, we've moved a little bit further up the stack into more of the visual side of things and how to, uh, how to uh, personally, I've been looking at a lot of the IPython widgets, how they work, how do we make them better, how do we make them more language agnostic, how do we make them play better with the ecosystem of widgets that are coming up in relationship to web components and Polymer and things like that. So we got some exciting work around those lines that basically starts bridging you know, you know, closing the gap between what is a notebook and what really is a web application, which is, I think, a very exciting space to be in. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's that's exactly. Those are exactly the kind of questions that we're interested in, and that we we actually put in our mandate to work on over the next uh, months and years. So it, it's it's. <laughs> It's perfect to have you folks joining the community and, and working with us in the open. I, I can see a bunch of people smiling right right away on, on, on camera. So I think everyone's excited to have you guys um, on board. It's, it's great. Thank you. And thank you for kind of com coming out and doing this openly with the community. It's, it's, it's been great collaborating with you guys on, on this. This is Jason, I have a work. quick question. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the stuff you guys have done is, is pretty exciting. I'm curious, how, how many people from IBM are, are, are going to start working with the community? Um, I guess right now um, there'll be the three of us, but there'll probably be a couple of others that will have an opportunity to uh, chime in. Um, we're, the way we've gotten approval, basically everybody in our team can, in our organization, has the ability to to contribute um but um uh you know we'll we'll take it uh step at a time right um right now you have uh two keys here peter and, and gino um both been basically leading efforts um uh, within within ibm uh gino around the widgets work uh peter around the um dashboards work and as well as the docker stack so uh let's just say for now it's a starting point uh, but behind behind both of them, there there are folks that are actually working on these projects internally. So, we and I, I guess you know our goal here is to take those that you know take that effort and get it out into the into the uh, into some new repos where the work can be done not just by our team and our extended teams, but also by your, yourselves as well. Cool. Welcome to the community. Thank you. So, Gino, where are you located uh, geographically? In Austin, Texas. Ah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Are, are, are all of you in Austin? I, no, Gino's in Austin, I'm in New York, and Peter's in, in Raleigh. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it'd be cool to get together. I'm in New York, too. And who's that speaking? Uh, this is Jason Grout. Oh, Jason, okay. Yeah, you guys should definitely try to chat in person at some point. I mean, Jason and Sylvan and the team at Bloomberg have been doing an enormous amount of work uh, from Blue from the Bloomberg side on the widgets and the notebook machinery. Uh, and uh, and Brian will be visiting at Strata, so you you folks should definitely coordinate on that um, in well in New York in the next uh, in the next month. Um, but uh, let's continue with with the meeting so that we keep we we keep moving and we keep on schedule while we're on camera. Um, who's uh, who's next? I know we have a lot of people. Cal Poly. Uh, so I've been working. Uh, I'm Aberon, a uh, student at Cal Poly. Uh, I've been working with the PySpark team, um, and I submitted a pull request there to make PySpark pip installable. Um, hopefully that'll. Uh, make things a lot easier if that gets merged in, especially for some of the work that Jeremy's working on, um, and just making working with uh, Spark from a notebook context a lot easier. Uh, also on that end, I've been looking into uh, changing the way that some of Spark's logging works. Um, I'm uh, currently working on an issue to make it so that uh, PySpark will identify if it's an, in an interactive environment 
and change its logging accordingly so that it's not just flooding the console um, by default with all these different info messages. Uh, I've also continued the work on the Python and Yarn, um, and I was able to get back in contact with uh, Ben at Continuum, um, and that's been going really well. Uh, made a lot of progress on that in last week. Can, can you summarize what, what the goal of the Python and Yarn is? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, essentially, it's just making it a skeleton um, so that anybody who wants to be running a distributed Python application on Yarn um, doesn't have to go through the entire process of writing a Yarn app. They can start from this skeleton point. Um, and then as a proof of concept of that, we'll also go and um, flesh out that skeleton with IPython Parallel so that we can put IPython Parallel on Yarn. Awesome. Simon? Uh, so I'm Simon. I'm also, uh, well, I guess I'm just graduated student at Cal Poly. But uh, I've been working on a spreadsheet for the past while, and I'm almost at the point where I think it can be packaged. But I guess a couple things I still need to do. I need to like get an actual keyboard manager. So I'll probably use whatever we can use for Jupyter's content for that. And then I also want to integrate a little bit more phosphor into it. That's pretty much what I'm going to be working on. Great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Cameron. I'm another Cal Poly student here. I'm actually a designer, so I mainly do UI, UX, responsive design. Um, over the past like few weeks, month, I've been working on a revamp of the entire Jupyter site. So when the users come onto the site, they're not going to not know what the Jupyter Notebook is. They'll have more information, have more in-depth detail about what the architecture, all, all that kind of stuff. I posted my GitHub pages onto an issue in the design of Jupyter. You can find it, see how you like it. Um, if you have any changes you want on that, you can post it. And if you have any design changes anywhere within Jupyter, just ping me and I can help you out. So, Look, can someone post uh, a link in the uh, hackpad? to the uh, current draft of the website. I, I can post it too. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Cameron, Cameron can post that uh, yeah. after the meeting so, so other, other people can look at it. We're, we're hoping to review that and uh, get it ready to launch uh, later this week or early next week. So we're, we're pretty close and, and would love feedback from everyone. But we're trying to get it out as pretty much as soon as possible so we can start running some analytics, some Google Analytics on the back end, see how people are kind of interacting with it and kind of make the appropriate changes so it's easier to use. I'm uh, Brian Granger uh, here at Cal Poly. And uh, what have I been working on? Uh, a lot of uh, sort of project communication, uh, I'm uh, going to be uh, in New York for Strata and uh, staying in New York a few weeks beyond that and uh, trying to organize some uh, get-togethers uh, there, hoping to get, uh, get together with Jeremy uh, and also Peter and other folks at IBM. Uh, Kyle Kelly uh, will also be there from Rackspace, who's done a bunch of the work on TempNB, uh, and also Jonathan Frederick. Uh, uh, the lead uh, person on the IPython widgets will be there. Um, and then, uh, as Fernando mentioned, uh, Jason uh, Grout and Sylvan Corlay at Bloomberg, uh, and then uh, Chris Colbert uh, from Continuum are also there. So there, there will be a, a lot of people related to the project in New York. And uh, I'm hoping to have some, some longer uh, technical times on various topics. Uh, when uh, we're there in New York and uh, I'm starting to send out emails to coordinate those things. Uh, I think at the, the top of the list, one is uh, having discussions about uh, Docker and deployment uh, based on the work that Jeremy has done, uh, the Docker stacks that Peter are working on. Um, and we, we would like to explore ways of starting to have a single kernel per Docker image rather than having multiple kernels uh, in a single Docker image, which creates 
a lot of a sort of a combinatorial complexity of how do you get a Docker image that has the right kernels in it? Um, it it's really a, sort of the pain and you end up with really big images. If we can get to the point where uh, each Docker image can have just a single kernel and that those can integrate into the uh, uh, kernel manager uh, and kernel spec architecture, I think it will make building things like TempNB and Binder and, and all these different tools much easier. And also maintaining those Docker images, uh, I think will be greatly simplified. So that that's one discussion that I'd like to gather people for. Uh, a second one is the ongoing work that we're doing to the front end. Uh, there's a lot going on in that space, in particular uh, with the folks at Continuum and Bloomberg, but also uh, obviously people at IBM are working on that. And then the last area would be the IPython widgets. Um, Gino, I don't know if you're able to come to New York, but uh, all, the main people involved in the, in the IPython widgets uh, we'll be there and would love to, it would be great to get all of you together to talk about that stuff if that's possible. Um, other than that, I've been working on hiring, hiring related things, physical space, um, and uh, I think that's it. As a quick reminder, folks, from Cal Poly, it would be good if at least some of you guys also have laptops to help out with the note taking so that we're not all doing all the note taking. Um, so. <laughs> We'll, um, we're, we'll put it in the hack cut after the meeting. So. Okay, cool. We've been trying. We've been trying to keep up to keep up with you guys. Oh, uh, so Ryan will go now too. Yeah. Hey. Introduce yourself first. Oh, uh, my name's Ryan. I'm working with uh, Brian over at Capoli. And uh, I'm doing stuff with uh, Matplotlib, introducing traitlets into the library. And um, at the moment, I'm essentially finished with uh, refactoring the base artist class in Matplotlib. And uh, I'm going to do code review, I think, later today with Brian on that. Great. Great. Um, who do? Uh, go ahead, Jason. You want to go? Um, I don't have uh, anything uh, big to report for this last week, um, other than participating in discussions that uh, that needed to happen. And Sylvan, he's here too. He enjoyed uh, rural France this last week. <laughs> <laughs> don't make us envious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, also uh, I wanted to bring up oh, something that yeah. uh, Brian asked me to to talk about during the meeting. Uh, so um, yeah, um, uh, there is a stream of pull requests on uh, the new com message. Uh, and so there is a, a pull request uh, in Jupyter client, uh, adding this new com message to the protocol. Uh, and uh, then which, P, which PR is it? Um, I can add it to the hack file if you want. Uh, Please, yeah, I, I, I made a heading for you already. I'm taking notes, so just um, go ahead and add it there. So the, let, let, me, let me look this, uh, check this out real, real quick. Yeah, you can do so, it later. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, and then there is another pull request in IPy kernel that depends on, that depends on it. And then another pull request in Notebook that depends on the PR in IPy kernel, and eventually a pull request in IPy widget that depends on the one on, in Notebook. So um, I just wanted to bring up that if you guys want to release uh, Notebook 4.1, that'd be great if uh, some of those were merged before and mm -hmm. you know part of it. Otherwise, I predict that we won't have all of it before 6.0. <laughs> 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 Uh, besides, I've been working. Uh, uh, um, I just iterated this morning on Threadless uh, on the you know the new API that we proposed. Uh, essentially, uh, uh, using uh, you know the observe observe decorator uh, decorator and an observe like in Atom. Um, and so, anyone who wants to comment on it is welcome to review the pull request. 
Um, and that would be great. It, uh, since this also incorporates some of the other API changes that we made, deprecating uh, the, you know, the, the PR by JSON, which deprecates the uh, ad addition of uh, uh, metadata in the, as keyword argument, it would be great if these deprecations happened with the 4.1 release of the notebook so that it becomes the earliest possible. I doubt we will deprecate something in between 4.0 and 4.1. That's when deprecations need to happen, right? Because they'll be changing in the in in the 4 to 5 release. It's not removal; it's just deprecation. So depre right. when we know that we're going to deprecate something, I, I think that the earlier is the better, right? Let's discuss that there. We can maybe raise a pending deprecation and deprecate the next version and actually remove in N plus one. Yeah, yeah let's discuss it on the, on, on the PR. <laughs> we have a pre-deprecation that we, we, we're we going to deprecate this. So in that's, that's how Python works. But anyway, let's, let's discuss that on the PR. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there, there, there is, uh, you know, this big uh, issue that were that had all the discussion in the translate API changes. Uh, so there were, I think that most of the items were already uh, uh, implemented in PRs, and most of them were merged. And there are like a couple of remaining items that we, I think, we should discuss at some point. So yeah, that, that's about it. And this, so this. This um, uh, PR34 basically reels in the others. There's this chain of dependencies, and this one will reel in the uh, the others. For the thread net? The ones oh, you mentioned. Oh. Sorry, could you say that again? There is a client one for the com messages, and the thread one is a different one. Yeah, okay. the thread net is, is a completely different stream. Yeah. So there okay. is a four PR. In um, current, um, in Jupyter client, iPy kernel, notebook, and I'm not sure I opened the one for iPy widget. And then there is another stream which is the trade test stuff. Yeah. That's it. I'm done. All right. Let's go. Well, I guess I'll go. Chris, if nobody else wants to jump in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I've been um, uh, working on uh, breaking apart Phosphor into much smaller uh, individually consumable packages um, so that it's not such a monolithic project. Um, that works uh, gone very well. I think there's about six repos packages out now that are uh, stable, production quality, fully tested, built on Travis, have usage examples, API docs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I've linked to those in the hackpad. Um, if you need any of that functionality, feel, feel free to start using it now um, in production. They're at 0.9.x, um, but that's just to allow me to, to fat finger some of the front matter stuff like, you know, readme's and testings and that kind of stuff. Um, they'll be flipped to 1.0 uh, pretty soon. Um, so that's uh, basically where all my work has been. Uh, it's going to continue on that. Um, the next packages to be released will be the core widget class, uh, which is actually stable now and ready to be used. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting it out there and going through the... Uh, the formalities of getting it up on Travis and all that kind of stuff. Um, so once those are out, um, layouts will follow soon, followed by the doc area, uh, followed by finally a, uh, a collection of um, leaf level controls um, that you know people will be able to use. Um, and all of those will be installable independently. So if you don't want any of the, the bigger packages for your, your apps, you don't have to use them. Um, so that seems to be addressing a lot of the uh, original concerns that some people had about uh, Foster being maybe perhaps a little bit too monolithic um, so yeah, that's my 30 second update. Cool. <laughs> this was like zip. Thank you, Chris. I guess I'll go next. Um, so I've been working on the 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 Jupyter JS services repo, um, and that actually uses two of those broken out FOSS4 packages. Um, <clears throat> we've got a um, the packaging model is modeled after what Chris is doing in his phosphor packages and that it uses TypeScript compiles down to a node releasable package. It's not released yet on, on NPM, but it's uh, posturing toward that. Um, I, I, I wrote up some mock um, WebSocket and 
Ajax-like request so I can test it on Node. So it gets tested on Travis on Node. Uh, we get the continuous integration set up. I've got uh, code coverage working using Istanbul, which uh, instruments the code as you're running it and gives you a nice coverage report. Um, working on the API docs and um, <clears throat> finishing out, rounding out the, the the different REST APIs. There's two open PRs that, that will complete that. But I had to take a step back because um, I wanted to have a consistent uh, experience ac across the different uh, services classes in that um, I wanted to be able, you to be able to register an on ready promise so that whenever that object considers itself ready for consumption, that promise will be fulfilled. So for example, on a kernel, when it gets when it when it gets fully connected and gets a kernel info reply over the WebSocket, then it considers itself on ready. So you, you'd be able to register for that promise. So I'm in the process of incorporating that now, and that same type of pattern will flow across all the different services objects to clean up that API. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's Oh, and also uh, there's some updates on the QGrid PR for the editable uh, table. Oh, yeah. Just, if anyone's curious, that, uh, um, that PR is just about ready to merge, I think. Into QGrid itself. Yes, I, I posted a link to that, that PR on the, on the hackpad. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm curious, um, how has the breakup of the phosphor repos felt for you in terms of using the smaller, the smaller broken up repos? Because obviously part of the part of the point of that exercise is precisely to see how it feels in actual usage and you're actually trying to consume them. So I, I uh, want to see if the, 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 the proof is in the pudding, right? And you're trying to eat the pudding. Sure. For me, for me, it's uh, as as they get released, I, I just add a couple, a line to each of my uh, config files uh, to incorporate that change and then change what the import looks like from the old phosphor import to the, the new uh, import from that particular package. Uh, so it's really, very simple, straightforward thing. Uh, there's a few lines of code to change and config files. Mm -hmm. And I, I can kind of comment on that same point since I, I was one, probably one of the first to, to dog through it since you know, Phosphor kind of depends on some of its own lower level um, libraries. Um, so that yeah. was you know yeah. kind of the driving motivation, uh, the, the, the driving, the, the motivator for the layout of the structure and the way the packages current, currently are is because I had to consume these smaller packages as I was refactoring things. Um, so it's actually, um, you know, once we found the pattern, it ends up being a fairly painless process to, to integrate it all together. So uh, one, one thing, uh, Steve, that I've been talking some with uh, Kyle and John about, uh, I'm over here, um, in, is how the kernels get wired up to uh, output areas and, and other components that uh, need to consume the reply messages from the kernel. And the way that works right now, or, or it has worked in the past, is that the uh, various methods of the kernel take uh, uh, callbacks that are gonna process the return messages. And uh, as we have started to work on the design of the output area, uh, the idea came into play of having uh, uh, classes that sit between the kernel and the output area, we're thinking of something like an output source class, whose job it is to uh, emit output messages that get consumed by the output area. And, uh, and I think we want to probably move that intermediate layer away from being callback based towards being interface and, and class based. So, so, so I, you could literally, go ahead. Sorry, Brian. Uh, yeah, we did uh, already address that concern. We, we changed from the, the old callback structure to when you call any of the um, any of the send message send send cell message like calls like inspect or execute, you get back a future, which then you can register callbacks to that future for a, for on on shell message reply on output on input and on done, um, and that will That's stay what alive for real time. You have to store something else somewhere else if you want it to work for real time. Callback will be gone or future will be gone if you refresh the page. That's something that needs to be stored somewhere in the in memory document. The the future is actually uh, uh, stored on the kernel itself. As of right now, it's in a map. Well, but but well, we, I just wanted to, I don't think we need to go into the technical details. I just wanted sure. to raise that. That issue, and part of our desire there is to have output source implementations 
that implement different filtering and aggregation operations. For example, you might want to hook one output area up to a single cell of a kernel or an entire kernel or maybe even multiple kernels. And so having a, a, an actual class and interface for an output source, or, and this also applies to other messages coming back from the kernel, I think will help us adapt the kernel messages to the consumer of those messages. So, but but we, we can continue the technical discussion uh, on the various repos. Okay, fair enough. Where where is this conversation going to be started? Because I'd like to to participate in it too. I I would say a combination of the JS uh, output area and JS services. Okay, can you put a, a note to the mailing list or something when the conversation starts happening? So that I mean, I think we should get in the habit if there's big conversations going on to just post a two line message to the mailing list saying, hey, you know, just FYI, we're talking about this over here. Thank you, Jason. I agree completely. Like being away at my normal difference, I like miss all the conversation. And it would be nice to have a um, centralized place where we have archives. Um, okay. Um, I've been uh, last week. I actually did a, a, some teaching. Um, there, we had a big, uh, a big. We have a, about once a year. We run a, a large uh, Py scientific Python bootcamp here at UC Berkeley, and this year it was in conjunction with LBL. It was the first time that we flipped it to being on Python 3. So we we had to move all of our content to being on Python 3. Uh, we uh, uh, Thomas Thomas and I wrote. Or he did most of the work, and then I did some editing at the end. Uh, a tool to convert. Uh, notebooks, I should add a link actually to the tool because it could be handy, a tool that will convert a notebook in place from Python 2 to Python 3. So if you have a directory of notebooks that are written for Python 2, it'll convert them in place to being Python 3 notebooks. Uh, it'll edit them in place so it can be handy. It may not be perfect, but at least it'll do all of the automatic conversions that uh, <coughs> that can be done using uh, using the Python 2 to 3 libraries. Um, and um, I had a link to the hackpad, and uh, and uh, it was also the first time that I uh, that I taught uh, widgets in a classroom setting, um, and it went uh, it went quite well. So that was uh, that was most of my uh, my time last week related to the project. Um, and then, as usual, a bunch of sort of behind the scenes administrative infrastructure work for the project that I always have to do. Uh, but that was um, that was it. So um, yeah, that's that's sort of uh, my report, uh, and uh, and the. Um, the, I'll also add a link to the uh, to the bootcamp teaching materials because they're up on they're up on GitHub uh, under Josh Bloom's uh, Josh Bloom's um, GitHub account. Uh, but uh, the the bootcamp went uh, quite well. It's about we teach about 200, 200 people for three days, kind of an intensive scientific Python, nonstop, eight hours a day um, um, session, and it um, it was fairly fairly productive. What are we missing? Who hasn't? I know. So da um, Damien is having audio problems, but he put in his notes already in the. Uh, I, in I the oh, Kyle. There you go. Hello, Kyle. How's it going? Um, sure. Yes, I'm, I'm Kyle Kelly. for at Rackspace since there's lots of introductions today. Um, over the weekend, I adapted Temp and Beta Swarm, which was really just adapting it to standard environment variables within Docker, so that it works with TLS certificates. Um, that was a quick fix. Um, uh, yeah. So m most of my goals right now, just to be transparent or to build towards making a more maintainable, secure system for O'Reilly, um, mostly so people get like instantaneous access to a Jupyter kernel. And in the front end, this means embedded access to some some Jupyter kernel, provide cells on a page, and then connect back to some remote service. Um, so. Breaking apart a lot of the JavaScript repositories means that we can build towards recreating Thebe and recreating the notebook as well as other pieces, like in the spreadsheets where someone's going to want to use a piece, it's in there. Um, and so for the case of like the output area, my interest is making iframes, which I know we tried it, failed, came back to it. The output area JavaScript works with uh, iframes now. I couldn't imagine performance-wise us using them in the notebook, but there's probably going to be context where 
Uh, we want output to be viewed by anyone, but we don't necessarily want access on the full page. Um, so I want to make sure that iframes work well. So yeah, so last this this last week has been more the kind of explorations on that that front end side as well as the back end side. So yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Um, have we left anyone who had anything to report on? Damien cannot on... talk. Yes, but Damien added his notes already to the page. He's been working on RISE and uh, good ways of testing, uh, making Conda, Conda packages for NB extensions. And he's been doing some work on server extensions. So he dutifully added his notes to the hackpad. He's, he's very good about that. Thanks, I Danny. can give a short. Uh, John Frederick couldn't make it today, but I can give a short update about what he's working on uh, okay. because I think it's rel uh, relevant to the, a number of things that other people are working on. Uh, he has been uh, spending time making uh, on a pull request to the existing uh, notebook repository to enable uh, us to start. Uh, using NPM packages uh, in the main notebook. And the idea here is that this would open the door for us to start uh, using and incorporating the new uh, JavaScript packages that various people are building, such, such as the JS services, the new output area. And uh, the main, all the hard work is done. Uh, John, uh, last time I talked to him, he was mostly beating his head against the brutal concrete of JavaScript testing with uh, Phantom and Casper. And uh, the, the big, I think the big, his conclusion and, and, and my conclusion as well is that that's just too painful and we need to stop banging our head against that particular concrete. Um, and so I know Kyle has been helping John look at different uh, alternate testing approaches. Um, I think there are alternatives. The big challenge is that we have uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of lines of existing test code uh, that will have to eventually be ported. Um, and so that, that's sort of what John's been working on. And uh, other than that, he's also been uh, having discussions with uh, various people about the uh, design of the uh, input area in a particular separating out the, 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 the model and the stateful part of that versus the uh, the view portions of it. So I, I could speak to another, that one of the big things that John's been working on, uh, mostly in our current code base, um, like when adapting to this kind of, we're in a, is PRs currently in a hybrid mode between uh, require JS and node require uh, and is working in many ways, um, but it's, fairly hard to work with. And I've noticed that, so we're beholden to pre-ES5 JavaScript in the notebook because of our testing framework, because Phantom isn't fully ES5. Uh, and so that was the that was the reason for the testing. Like we couldn't use bind, which has been around for years. Even IE8 has it. <laughs> uh, and anecdotal evidence, we're, we're using um, Karma to do our browser-based testing on Phosphor, and that seems to be working quite well. Uh, yeah, Karma. Sort of, so, so we Karma's use a combination great. of, of uh, Karma and Mocha, and it just works. So yeah, it, the the hard part is adapting what's already there. Yeah, that, yeah, that that's a challenge. challenge. A lot of soup. <laughs> And I also just want to add that um, you can use Karma with Firefox on Travis. You don't have to use Phantom JS there. Yep. Okay, who's left? Is Nick still around? Or is he gone? I saw him at some point on the list. I think he, he keeps dropping in and out, so he might be having a connection issue. He's back, and then he'll be gone again in a second. Uh, I see him. I see him connected with 
uh, but with no microphone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've Steve him. and Chris, it might be useful if uh, either you got involved on John's current PR for the NPM stuff, or started a new one that would adapt our testing over to Karma, um, since it's going well. I mean, I, I certainly want to. It's just, yeah. Is it, as soon as as soon as we make some of those kinds of changes, it should make it easier for us to start bringing in the components we're building to replace in the current notebook, and then just start pushing it out. What um, what's what testing framework are, you, are is being used currently? Currently, it's Casper. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? I didn't I didn't catch that. Casper JS. Yes. Casper and Phantom. But the the tests are horrifically complex, and it, it's not what's not obvious. And I talked to John about this: is we may want to refactor our tests for each component as those new components get written and not try to port our existing tests over. That, that I mean, honestly, John has probably put, and other people, like we probably have four full-time months worth of effort in those current JavaScript tests. And I, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm hesitant I, I, for us. To bottleneck on rewriting all that stuff before we do anything else. I'm plus one also because having tests for each component will speed up the test suite pretty uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot. And that's part of it is is as people are writing the new components, they're testing them properly already. So that may be a, a way of doing it more organically than trying to block our development on refactoring those tests. Right. I was I, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, basic most of the tests these days in the current notebook are end-to-end -end tests. So they're testing not only commercial, I mean, they start up an IPython server, and then they start sending messages back and forth, and a lot of times they're not testing not just uh, message protocol plus IPython server working correctly with the JavaScript assumptions, but also the rendering that the JavaScript is doing. It's a, like it's a complete end-to-end -end testing, uh, yeah. which makes it hard because they're rather mon monolithic. Yeah, but the end-to-end -end testing relied to too much. The end-to-end -end testing relied too much on the HTML structure and the ID of components and things like that, which make it really difficult to like start running. Like it's yeah. We we should still have functional tests, but we're probably gonna have to rethink them. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's yeah. It's it's layer, layering them right. It's having having actual unit tests be separate from your integration tests. Okay, I see Nick Nick joined uh, with what appears to be a microphone. Nick, I don't know if you want to give a quick three minute uh, report and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, we're coming on the hour. Uh, Nick, do you have a microphone? Nick, going okay. once. <laughs> Nick, going twice. Apparently not. Oh, there you go. Nick. Uh, the, the audio is terrible. Are you in the ocean or something? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, let me try restarting it one more time. I'm just, I haven't tried using it on Linux before. It's uh, non-trivial. Well we can actually hear you, and we're okay. you know, yeah, we're running on the hour, and we can actually hear you. So I would just go ahead. Okay, uh, I don't have a, a lot to report for this week. Um, I've just been messing around with some uh, uh, different kinds of uh, things that we might be able to use for the dashboarding sort of uh, poster building stuff that's been coming up now and again. Um, I did just get better internet, which is why I'm at home waiting for the cable guy. Uh, <laughs> so I should be able to do some more stuff more efficiently on the uh, Docker stuff for getting um, NB Viewer up and running on four. That's about it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Good luck with the cable guy. <laughs> and. Uh...
Okay, I, okay. it was amazing that even even though we are missing a few core people because they're on travel, we still had a, a, a huge meeting and uh, fantastic to have a bunch of new, new community people. Um, let's wrap up the regular dev meeting uh, right on the hour. Um, but I'm actually probably uh, not. Uh, go ahead, Matthias. Were you going to say something? Yeah, just a quick reminder. I posted something at the end of the ACPAD to show to see all the PR uh, across all the organization on on GitHub. So if you want to see everything which is happening and help review and merge, uh, just go to GitHub.com/pools and tap user column uh, organization like Jupyter, IPython, Phosphor.js. And you can see like at once all your PRs and go through and merge the ones that are green and everyone agreed upon or start reviewing. Ah, okay, wonderful. And then you get you can get really scared. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it right also now, works with issues, right, but it's much bigger. Yeah, right now it says 81 open PRs. If with that filter, with that I mean, you can actually provide that thing that you said is actually, I mean, that thing has a URL, so. And, uh, and right now that URL provides 81, 81 open PRs. Okay. If we can have less PRs and people, it would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so is the plan, uh, sh is the plan that we want to continue the technical discussion on the, the Docker Docker runtime stuff with Jeremy right away because it might be easier just to keep basically to keep this keep this channel open and that way that way we don't have to stop a recording and start a new recording. Um, another option is that I stop it to have two videos so that people can listen Not to that video separately. What, I think what you and I prefer? have another meeting. You and I have another meeting with Charlotte right now. <laughs> what <laughs> is, is it on my calendar? <laughs> You're off by a week, Fernando. You remember, right? <laughs> Everything was off by a week when when I left from Berkeley. Brian, are you sure? Uh, <laughs> well, well, one of us is probably sure. <laughs> one of you is wrong. Yeah, okay. Hold on. Let, let I me don't go see. Back. I don't see it on my calendar, but I trust you. So yeah, let's let's say bye to everyone who wants to leave now. Anyway, let them drop a uh, drop and yes. leave this on. Everybody's and wrong too. Thanks. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to drop off, and uh, let's uh, stop the recording for a minute. Bye, internet. That way, we don't have we have a kind of a sensible YouTube video. Bye, internet. <laughs>